So this is um, an application that we put together uh, some uh, years ago for a small municipality. And when you think about a, a cemetery, it's not um, that different from a, uh, a city. Um, they have parcels and uh, water, uh, irrigation, etc., streets, etc. So one of the things you might want to do is get to a location quickly. And uh, we've predefined, uh, for example, a, a street or a street intersection uh, address and known landmarks. So if you come in here and select a street, you can quickly get to the map. And it's not necessarily that we're interested in that particular street, but we knew that, for example, uh, there's uh, something of interest uh, near that location. So uh, if I'm in the um, property department or, or a tax um, uh, assessing department, I may be interested in opening up the parcel layer. Uh, when I do that, I can now come in and see information from the database about each of these parcels. So uh, I started with the database to get to the map. Now I'm using the map to get back to the database. So uh, how that would work with these new uh, generation of drones is they have the ability to create the CAD layers and we can provide known locations, uh, longitude and latitude, and uh, help them with their controls so that the flights are more accurate and can be um, uh, all uh, included into a common base map. Um, and the information collected and stored in a common centralized database. So we just took a look at uh, municipal works, which I think could be easily retrofitted or repurposed for the uh, cemetery application. Let me explain how I think that'll fit into the for-profit side. Uh, we recently um, won a bid to basically bring this application to the web. As you can see, it has um, basically the same framework as uh, the municipal works application it included uh, the uh, uh, ability to scan the documents that uh, Wayne County has um, that uh, describe land ownership uh, that go back to the 1600s. Um, uh, in terms of uh, property ownership, uh, Wayne County is one of the most complex areas in the uh, nation. So. Um, the kinds of information that we're tracking here um, are uh, old drawings and maps and um, uh, tract books um, and the, the, the purpose is to identify where possible and uh, establish longitude and latitude uh, for the monuments and witnesses that are referenced in the um, deeds, legal description. There's uh, the ability to um, find subdivisions uh, for a particular area and then uh, once you get to a subdivision you can zoom in and find out more about that particular subdivision. Uh, you can find out what map sector, for example, that subdivision is located, what uh, drawings there are. Here's a drawing from 1991, 1998, etc. Uh, So it allows us to tie documents and drawings and maps of all sorts in the database as well as to geography defined by what we call vector maps uh, or CAD CAM or um, some may call it a geographic information system if you put it all together. And then what we're proposing to do is to use the same framework that we used to build this application to find the business functions, to find the data, and provide the state plane coordinates that they can tie into with these new drones that are coming on the market, like uh, the one from DJI Innovations and others.
People have never heard of DJI Innovations, but if you showed them the Hong Kong startup's best-selling product, everyone would recognize it immediately. DJI has created our favorite drone, the Phantom, a unit so ubiquitous it has become the face of the technology across popular culture. For better or worse, it's the Kleenex of drones. What made the DJI Phantom so popular was its combination of power, price, and simplicity. They have also offered a much more expensive unit for Hollywood professionals, but it wasn't safe or affordable for the average consumer. Today, the company is trying to bridge the gap between those two with its newest unit, the Inspire One. We see this as bridging both the community that wants really easy to use systems without thinking too much about the mechanics of flight with the crowd that wants really professional video easily captured from the sky. The legs lift overhead after takeoff, allowing the Inspire to shoot 360 degrees of video. So you got a 4K camera and it also streams full HD video, 1.7 kilometers distance in near real time down to your iPad. It also has an HDMI video out on the controller, so you can automatically see this on a large screen or connect it to your Atomos recorder. It's to the point where if you throttle forward and then let go, it's almost like you th throw on a brakes on a car. It's quite impressive. Another big addition to the Inspire is a camera on the bottom that can recognize what's below it and lock on to its current location. When you're flying outside and you're not sure if you have a GPS connection, fly close to the ground and you'll be steady. The Inspire can offer a dual operator mode with one pilot and one cameraman. It's still possible to do both with one person, but adding another set of hands allows for more flexible and fine-tuned shooting. For single operators, the Inspire offers the ability to lock the camera and maintain an area of focus, even as the unit moves about, a godsend for any wedding photographers hoping to capture the perfect aerial shot of that first kiss. The DJI Phantom cost around $1,500, while a fully loaded S1000 ended up closer to 10 grand. The Inspire One tries to split the difference with a price point of roughly $3,000. DJI is also announcing its first software development kit, or SDK, allowing outside developers to integrate their programs with the unit's camera and video software. There's some applications looking at 3D mapping that we're really excited about. There's a whole host of applications that we never really realized that these aerial systems were perfect for, but people are using the systems to explore. 